author is funded by the Pacific Northwest Writers Association, supporting writers from pen to publication since 1955. To learn more about the PNWA and their yearly conference, please go to pnwa.org. Hi, this is Bill Knauer of Author Magazine, and today I'm in the Bellevue, Washington home of Jerry Russell, author of This Laird of Mine. Jerry, welcome to Author. Thanks, Bill. It's really great to be here with you today. You've just turned in book number 11. 10. <laughs> you turned in book number 10. Yes. Okay. So that's great. And, so the, and, the, and you published your first in 2006. Yes. But you did a lot of writing before that novel got published. Uh, you did, I mean, everything from, was it journalism you did and marketing and what all did you, technical writing? So I started out actually um, with broadcast journalism and print journalism, but when I um, was starting a family, I decided I wanted more of a nine to five type thing. So I went into more of the technical writing training type work. And then when I was pregnant with my um, third child, I uh, was on bed rest for a while and I started reading romances. I'd never read one before then. And so I was just started reading them voraciously, one after the other, and I loved them. I didn't really know what I liked about them, but I, I loved them. And then I started analyzing them, and I loved the story, and I loved the happy endings. And then they stopped ending the way that I wanted them to. The characters weren't acting the way that I wanted them to, so I decided I needed to change that. And once I started kind of rewriting the book for the author that I just read, I decided maybe I should try this myself. So I started writing my first book when my daughter was three years old. Oh, that's so interesting. So, yeah. You know, that's the way, that's like one of two ways that a lot of novelists begin is either, ooh, I, well, you did both of them, which is I love that, but they did it wrong. Mm -hmm. And you could feel within you what it was supposed to be. And so yes. that's how it started with you yep. wanting, what do you mean different? You mean, in, when you say you wanted different endings, you, you mean that book you wanted to end the characters to do different things. I really liked strong heroines and when the heroine started acting out of character or um, doing things that I didn't think would be appropriate given the context of the book, it made me upset. So that's when I started wanting to rewrite those endings to, to make her darn it act the way I wanted her to. <laughs> yeah, and so when you sat down to write your first novel, what was that like? Well, so I, I actually wrote for 13 years before I was published. Uh, okay. So I wrote multiple books before I was published. And, and were you bouncing around within the romance genre? Were you trying to find your place? My fourth book, which was uh, The Warrior Trainer, very strong female character. She was actually the warrior. She trained all the men to fight. She's the one that wore the kilt. And um, it got some great reviews. I won a couple of awards with it and um, I submitted it all over the place and the response that I got back from a lot of editors was your heroine is too strong. Too strong? Too strong. What year was this? Uh, when I was submitting it, it was probably like 2000, 2000, anywhere from 2000, 2003. All right. And it, it's kind of, so I went on and I wrote the next book and then, you know, after that and it's kind of funny because five years later, the book that sold for me was the warrior trainer. Oh, what, what, you, so you kept submitting it? No, I pulled it for a while. Um, and I actually, the way that I got published was that I entered a contest. It was called American Title II. Um, it was kind of like uh, American Idol and Survivor smashed together. <laughs> <laughs> and it was run through um, Dorchester Publishing and Romantic Times Magazine. And there were 10 or 11 finalists in, in my year and we uh, went through five elimination rounds. And, you know, every time yeah. it was all voting and people got knocked off, knocked off until there was two of us left. And uh, the final two, um, my book won. And with that, I was, I got a one book contract with Dorchester. Wow. And then after that one was published, then we went back to contract many times. Wow, so what was that like for you after all those years of toiling away? You know, it was angsty, it was hard, it was, um, I learned a lot about myself as a writer. I learned my craft a lot better during that time period. I don't think it was because I was a terrible writer. I think what it was is that I wasn't writing what was in the Vogue then. Because those very same editors that said your heroine is too strong were the ones that have bought the book and said, we love your strong heroine. Literally the same Literally, editors? Yes. So, you know, 
it, it, fiction has a cycle. And I mean, just like right now, paranormals are not that popular right now. But they now. were like five years ago. But they were ago. five years ago and they will be five years from now. It's, fiction has a cycle. But self-publishing has shortened that cycle for, for a lot of um, authors because New York is no longer in charge of what readers are going to read. It's very reader driven. And if readers decide that they want more vampires, more vampires are going to show up. But right now it's really hard to, to sell vampires. It's just people got too much of them. That's right. kind of the way it goes. And so now you just handed in the, the 10th book is a, is a contemporary. Yes. And now this is your first con Very published first. contemporary. Yep. Had you written any contemporaries prior to this? The only thing that I'd done that was contemporary was the historical contemporary split. Right. So the which was a time travel. travel. And um, does, does yeah. this contemporary have a paranormal little paranormal element it, it to it also? It did when I started it and I turned in the first 100 pages and my editor made me take it out. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so how do you like the modern world? Is it romantic enough for you? Yes, it is. <laughs> is it? Can you do what you need to do in it? Yeah. Did you find Did you find your way in it? Did you feel like your voice was able to be? It took a little while. It? it took a little while because when when I write historicals, I don't speak or write in contractions, and in the uh. contemporaries, you absolutely have to to make it sound modern. You know, and I'd gotten used to use not using certain words in my historicals, like mesmerize or automatic or things like that, you don't even think about. Those came from something. Mesmer is, was a magician, and, and right. so you have, to, you have to know the etymology of language in order to be able to use it over here and but over here. But you're freed up. You can use all the words you know I now. I know. <laughs> I got to do a couple scenes that I've been dying to do that I never could have done in, in uh, the past. So. And so, you know, the... You've written, so you've written a lot of romance. You've, got, you've published 10. You're gonna, gonna have published your 10th, plus you had all the ones you wrote before you got published. Are you still interested in the romance genre? Oh, yeah. It's got a certain arc to it. Yes. It still interests you each time. Oh yeah, you know, yeah? what's not to love about happy endings? What's not to love about helping <laughs> two people that when you start the book, they are in chaos? I mean, that, that, that's the way books are. Right. There's two characters that are in chaos, and you help bring order to their life, and you give them a happy ever after. What's not to like about that? So it still interests you. For Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. So you and I are going to be attending uh, the Pacific Northwest Writers Association yes. Summer Conference. Yes. What, for you, is the value of a writers' conference like the PNWAs, both as an, as an attendee and as a sure. participant? Well, number one, there is no other group of people in the world that think like writers except writers. <laughs> so true. so yeah. we live so often in our writers' lives in this like cave of, of isolation where it's just us and our characters and we hardly ever see people or talk to people. And it's so lovely to go to conferences and be around other people that think just like you do and to have that that networking available, it's the it's the very best part. Yeah. Yeah. All right, now I've got one more question for you. And what I'd like you to do is finish this sentence for me. Okay. If writing has taught me anything, it's taught me what? <laughs> Discipline. Um, that I can do anything if I just set my mind to it. Um, that sometimes when people say no uh, about uh, whether it's an editor or an agent, um, sometimes that's just a call for for me to, to push harder or do, to dig, be more diligent, to do um, more things, to learn my craft better, to just really get in there and understand why it was a no and turn it into a yes. And that it only takes one yes to get a book published.